Hello everyone and welcome back to the Retro Recall. I hope you're doing awesome. Today we're going to get back to basics and do something slightly different on the channel, soldering. <laughs> we haven't done that in a long time. I guess the real inspiration for this video is really around a piece of old tech that I have that I really want to see get up and running again. Mainly because it has some sort of retro tech sentimental value in my life because it was something that I was introduced at a young age when we first started connecting to the internet via dial-up. We have the Hayes V-Series Ultra Smart Modem 9600 V.32 from 1987. And these particular devices were absolute workhorses back in the day. So I really wanted to get this up and running today. You know what? We have lots to do as we always do. Let's get right to it. Okay, and we're back. Welcome back. And, you know, this particular modem itself, when I talked about having some sort of nostalgia for me, is that this was our first modem. This is what we used to dial up to the internet. We would literally have a bank of hours that we purchased when we connected on our 486 utilizing this modem. And my brothers had used this modem in earlier days connecting to Telnet and connecting to BBS and connecting to various things when they were going to university. And so this modem has some nostalgic place in my life and I'd like to get it back up and running. So the other day I went and tried to look for the power adapter for it, I couldn't. So I ended up having to go online and fortunately I was able to get an exact power cord for this unit. It is quite different in the back of the uh, back of the unit where the where the power cord goes in and the type it requires. So Fortunately, I was able to find one that was tested on eBay in locally in Canada. So I was able to get it shipped for very, very inexpensive. And then so I went, OK, that was fine. So I had that. And then so when I went to go do the 56K dial up video right there from Net Zero, I wanted to use this modem. So I took the modem and plugged it in and it was acting quite differently than I remember. And so I'm just going to plug it in right now and show everybody on the channel what it's doing. If I'm wrong here, please keep me honest in the comments. It's been a long time since this has been activated or used. Okay, here we go. So we have it plugged in there, and I just have the camera on the angle it's on because I'm going to be soldering. So I'll take a look here. So I'm going to I have it plugged in now. I'm going to flip the switch in the back, and you'll see what happens. So it comes up with off hook, I believe, is what that means. Is the OHRD is received data, and MR is modem ready. Now I don't ever remember modem ready flashing and that was something i remember being completely steady it would just stay on and i don't remember received data staying on either and so usually what would happen is once the modem detected a signal from the com port on the back of the computer so you plug it into com one or com two based on the serial cable you'd have the plugged in it would activate the modem and it would detect the signal and these would these lights would kind of change up a bit but it's, it's acting quite differently than I remember. And I brought up some in interesting documentation on the V-Series modems and nothing really refers to the modem light, the modem ready light flashing. It just says, if it's on, it's on, it's off, it's off. It doesn't say anything about flashing. So I was kind of like, okay, well, it's not working quite well, but I mean, it could just be me. So I plugged into the computer via the COM port in the back and there it is there. So DTE interface. So it's 24, sorry, 25 pin serial connector put it in the back of the computer, sure enough, installed the drivers for it, no problem, went to activate it, nothing happened. There was no change. And then, so the other thing that's supposed to happen is when it detects a line, similar to if you have a landline phone and you unplug the line from the actual phone itself, it will come up and say extension in use. Well, when this is unplugged, it's not detecting any sort of uh, connection. So when it was plugged in, the off hook, or on hook, I think it's off hook, it should literally be off. I mean, right now it's considering off hook because it doesn't know what to do, it's unplugged. I plug in the phone line and it doesn't make any difference. So again, I'm thinking there's definitely some problems with the modem. What we're gonna do is take it apart here and see inside what I saw earlier. So I'm just gonna turn off the power to it, unplug the modem, here we are. 
and it's fairly straightforward to open up. So on the side here, we just have a couple of clips. I'm just gonna get my plastic uh, spludger here and uh, open this up. So basically just a couple of plastic hooks there. You gotta be very careful. I mean, the modem from 1987. So this plastic is a little brittle. So we have the plastic clip off and it just exposes this front part of the modem. So it's not coming out anywhere. It's in the enclosure still because there's two little screws here, two Phillips head screws. Just gonna remove those. Really straightforward. Don't lose these screws. Don't know if I'd be fine, easy replacements for them. And I mean, anybody back in the day who had this sort of modem, I really want to hear about it in the comments because again, this has some nostalgic history for me because these are my first memories of dialing up to the internet. But I mean, these had multiple, so they, they saved the same enclosure. So these enclosures would be used and then you'd have different modem cards in them. And then of course you'd have different face plates for the different type of models that you would have uh, re respectively to the, uh, to the modem. Now this is a Hayes Ultra smart modem. There's different versions of the 9.6 modem. So 9600 9, baud. And I imagine that's what this card is for. There's an expansion card that's actually on the modem here that's screwed in here. And I imagine that gives it additional functionality. And if you know exactly what that is, I would be really interested to hear about it in the comments. Again, I don't know a lot about this card and the documentation I found is extremely, extremely deep and which is great, but it doesn't really talk to me about, you know, particularly the, uh, you know, use cases and things like that. So if you have that, your experience, please let me know down below. I'm really excited to hear about it. So this modem itself is fairly straightforward in terms of a modem. Now, I went through and looked at all the different chips. I went down, looked at everything here. I mean, there's the Hayes chip. And I imagine that's the, um, the configuration, the BIOS is 1987 here. And I, so I took this out of its socket and I put used some de deoxid on it just to be sure it wasn't anything to do with that. And it's not. And then I started looking around the actual board, you know, nothing really fancy until I saw the two big capacitors here. So I looked at the two caps and I don't know if the camera's picking up on it, but there's definitely a bulge. You can probably see it right there. Let me just get my plastic pointer there. So you can probably see that there's a bulge right there and slightly forming right there. And the minute I see anything like that, it starts to become a bit suspect. And I kind of go, all right, well, what are we gonna do with that? So, I mean, we have that to look at. And the other thing that gave me additional pause on this is when I plugged it in as is, so like just like this without the enclosure, this started heating up quite a bit, not hot to the touch, not like to the point where you couldn't touch it, but it was definitely too hot to for my comfort. Like I've touched caps, I've even touched caps as large as this, and I haven't felt the warmth uh, that these felt. And the last thing I'll say is when I pushed on them, it made this eerie noise, like this high pitched whine when I touched the cap. So I just went, you know what? It, that's too much going on to say it may or may not be the cap. I went online to DigiKey and ordered replacement caps. These are 25 volt, uh, 1000 microfarad caps. And uh, I, again, I just ordered them online, fairly inexpensive for what they are. And I'm just looking at it again, make sure we got the right ones. Pretty confident we do. There's a 25 foot volt, uh, not 25 foot, 25 volt, 1000 microfarad there as well. And so, and, and the dynamic diameters match perfectly. So anyway, we'll make sure that these, hopefully the spacing is correct. They are, that's wonderful. I, I did all the measurements I could just to be sure we were, we were good to go. Okay. So I think the next step is what we need to do is we literally just replace those two caps. That's what I'm hoping for, that that'll be the solution that we do and see if that'll end up changing the modem to different behavior. And uh, yeah, and if not, well, it will be, <laughs> hopefully it will, that's all I'll say. Hopefully this fixes it because the symptoms, like I said, I looked at the other capacitors on the board and on the PCB and I don't see any issues with any of these. I don't see any of the same bulging that I'm seeing on these two. I looked all around, I didn't see anything damaged. I've kept this in a very good environment where there's no risk of moisture or damage or anything. You can see the condition of the board. Everything looks fantastic. I mean, the modem could be at the end of its life, but my knowledge is the last time this was used, it worked fine. So I just think from sitting here at my place for the last 17 years not being used, that these caps just eventually just didn't work uh, or just started going. So we're going to start with this, see how it goes. 
Let's get the uh, desoldering iron and the, the soldering iron all heated up here and we'll start to work on this board. Okay, and we're back here. So uh, welcome back and we have it all ready to go. So I have the desoldering gun and the soldering gun all heating up there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a little bit of fresh solder. I mean, this solder is fairly old and I just wanna make sure that we um, have a nice spot to work with here. So I'm gonna make sure that the soldering gun is good to go here. So let's add a little bit of solder. And uh, yeah, I mean, pretty straightforward. It just makes it easier, you know, when it mixes with the old solder. Um, just helps it easier to go to remove it from the from the PCB. And we don't want little solder blobs there, that's for sure. Uh, it doesn't like taking that solder, that's for sure. Do the same thing here, the other leg of the capacitor. I mean, again, we're pretty straightforward. All we're doing is adding some extra solder just to make it a little better. Okay, Mr. Solder Blob there. Oh no, I got it on my mat. All right, there we are. Okie dokie. Now we'll take our desoldering gun and you can kind of like see where the hole is in the end of the soldering gun there. So you want to make sure you kind of go through the leg. There we are. And you just want to kind of get that solder out of there. You don't want to leave it on too long. You don't want to do any damage to the board. To the PCB and I mean where the solder is so old in comparison I just want to make sure that we get it all out there oh, that looks good Did the same thing on this one and their the legs are <laughs> kind of bent here so I'm just trying to get at the right angle to be able to get these removed Okay, that looks good. Okay. Now just to be sure. Make sure I can move the legs. There we are. And that should come right back out. There we are. We have one cap removed. Well, it does show a little damage there for sure. Look at that. Here, let's put my hand behind here. Look, you can see that the cap was definitely doing some leaking there. So we're going to have to make sure we stop any sort of reaction with some vinegar on the board because I don't want it to do any damage to the PCB. You can definitely see there's been some underneath. Yeah, okay. Well, we'll see that as we go here, but you can see it's on. It's reflective on the other side as well. So it was definitely leaking a little bit there. Okay, so we have one out. Now time for number two. Same process, fairly straightforward. Having a desoldering gun is awesome. If you don't have a desoldering gun, I mean, you can use different methods for removing the the solder. You can use the soldering gun with some solder wick. And uh, yeah, there's, there's different methods. But uh, again, this is one of those things that I just had to have if I was ever going to do this because it just makes the job that much easier. Oh, I can smell, I can smell the uh, capacitor for sure. Yeah, definitely a little bit of a fishy smell. There, okay. So now, let's see if this one come off as easily as the other ones did. A little bit of a wiggle. Just see if we can get those freed up. I think we're pretty good there. There we go. We have, oh yeah. Yeah, you can see that was leaking as well. So there's a little bit, definitely a little bit of leaking going on underneath. Oh, definitely a fish smell to both. So... Those capacitors were definitely not good. Okay, that's good. Now we have those two off there, which is amazing. And that's what we want. Okay, I'm gonna turn that off for now. We don't need that going right now. Now that we've desoldered that. And I'm gonna get some vinegar so we can stop any electrolytic from damaging the PCB. Okay, so I have our vinegar here and this just allows the to neutralize the electrolytic, if there's any, let's just put some on here and see if anything bubbles up. Usually you can tell if there's anything there. 
And a little bit on this side, not much on this side. We might have just caught it just in time, but it's just good to get that using the vinegar. You can see that you can see what's coming off there. So I just do a little bit of a rub with the vinegar. Just really cleans up the the area. There we are. We'll do both just to be sure everything's good. And we'll do the same thing on the other side. Just neutralizes. Yeah, there's a lot of gunk coming off there for sure. We'll just want to make sure we don't leave it on because it can cause additional damage to the board. We don't want that. And I keep on saying board, I mean, just because I'm so used to working on motherboards, but the PCB of the modem. So if I'm saying board, I apologize uh, to anybody who's screaming going, it's not a board, it's PCB. Okay, so I have that on there. And then we're going to do the same thing with uh, 99 or 90, yeah, 99 percent isopropyl alcohol. So I just take that uh, IPA basically for short. And I just take that and do the same thing. I'm just gonna move that over there. Just lose anything. And what this does is actually just cleans up the uh, vinegar. Essentially, it just counteracts the vinegar because even the vinegar can cause uh, damage to the PCB and to other surrounding components and areas. And we don't want that to happen. And yeah, uh, that's all we do. We'll do the same thing on both sides. Fairly straightforward. Just make sure you, the whole area is cleaned up here. Nice and easy. Yeah, there we are. And I say about 99% as it dissipates really quickly, as you can see. And everything is nice and fresh and clean and ready to work on again. So the next thing I'm going to do, besides throw that out, is grab one of the brand new capacitors. And these are, you know, positive and negative terminals. Negative terminal is denoted right here on the side. And in this case, the negative was towards me or towards the edge of the, of the board. I say board again, but <laughs> of the, uh, of the PCB. I'm just going to bend them a little bit just to hold the capacitor in place. I think that's a pretty decent fit if I do say so myself. And these capacitors that I'm using are, I believe they're Panasonic. Nothing too, too fancy from DigiKey. They're not supporting me, but uh, uh, the great source for these sort of components. Okay, so we have that in there. And I'm just going to bend these out a little bit right at the source. Because that way, when I go to put them in, when I go to solder, we're good to go with the other one. Go There it is. Okay. So we have this, again, negative towards me for both. I have a little negative mark on the board, on the PCB here, but unfortunately the IPA took that away on me. Okay, get that in there. Good, awesome. Our two beautiful brand new capacitors. Restoring a board from, or, <laughs> stop it. Report, re restoring a PCB, a modem from 1987. There we are. You have those on there. Okay, that looks pretty darn good. My goodness, they look flat in comparison to these guys that are definitely bulging a bit and really smelly. Really got that fish smell to them. Okay, so we're back here again and we're good to go. So the soldering iron is good to go here as well. We've had that on the whole time and we're just gonna do something simple. I mean, nothing too fancy here. We're just gonna put a little bit of solder in here and uh, heat up the leg. Okay, we'll do number two here. Again, same thing. Number three. That one went in nicely. Okay. And number four. And uh, what I did off camera here, everybody, is that uh, I didn't realize till after the fact, but I uh, I hadn't uh, put any flux on there, so I had done that in between. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to take our side cutters, now that we have those in, do a double check to make sure those are good to go, and they are. I'm just going to bend them back up, though, the best I can, just because future me wants to... If I ever have to replace this again in my lifetime, just easier to work on. Okay, I'm gonna get the side cutters here. A little cutting me in the process. 
pretty straightforward. Oh, legs are flying, that's for sure. Kind of got to wear eye protection when you're doing this. There we are. We have our new capacitors in there, no problem. And I'm just going to touch that up a bit. I just like to make sure we're all clean and good to go. Hard to get at when you have big legs sticking under there, but essentially just making sure that the solder is nice and clean. And it's good. All I do is reflow it using the using the solder gun. Heat it up, and you can see that it just shapes itself there nicely. I just couldn't get to it because of the leg and where it was. This is what I do. I mean, the solder is there. It's not going anywhere. And the last thing we're going to do, now that's done, is just take, uh, take some isopropyl alcohol again and just give it a little bit of a wipe here with a cotton swab just to get any sort of flux residue or any sort of anything else off of there. I love how it keeps the, gets everything off there. All right, we have all that clean. And one of the other methods that I've seen online quite a bit that I like as well, I mean, this doesn't call for it, it's done. But one of the things I like to see or do is really just take a take a paper towel and you spray some isopropyl alcohol on there. So just spray it on the spray it on this board here. You put your paper towel there and you just wipe it like this. And just make sure it cleans up any sort of because sometimes it's hard to get in there around the, the legs of the capacitor, so it's uh, good to do it that way too. Showing different methods, everybody can do their own, whatever way you want. It's just what works for us. Okay, that's good. All right, we have our capacitors all done there, and it's looking pretty darn good. I'm just making sure that everything is good, that it's not going to touch anything on the metal chassis. I don't think it is. Okay, so the true test here is going to be to test the board. And so it has these LEDs here along the edge that light up. So the modem ready is actually at the very end. And I'm going to just slide this into its enclosure just so we can see them lit up properly with the proper LEDs there. So let me get uh, zoomed out here. There we are. So I'm just going to slide this in just so we can see the proper reading on the front and make sure we are good to go. Plus, I'm going to test it here, just look inside, make sure my legs for my capacitors, where I soldered, yeah, there's lots of room there, so no worries. They, they thought about that, obviously, because I just wanted to, I don't want to touch the, the chassis by any means. Okay, so we have that in there. It is turned off, and okay, so far so good. So we remember we saw the behavior before, and see if it truly was the capacitors or we have another component that is going bad on us. Let's plug it in. Okay, we have it plugged in there. And let's turn it on and see what happens. Okay, so this time the modem ready is flashing, but the received data light instantly came off. I'm going to get a phone line hooked up to this to see if that makes a difference. I'm going to see if that uh, on hook or off hook comes off or on. Let's just see. Okay, and we're back here, and this time I have an RJ11 connection right back going back to my uh, home phone line. Yes, I still have one. And so I believe this is the line. It is. So the line is right here. And so we have the modem on. So as you can tell, it's doing something different now since we replaced the capacitors. The mo modem ready light flashing, that still shocks me. I didn't expect to see that flashing. Maybe it always did, and I just never noticed it. And then the off hook, I'm going to see, or on hook or off hook, whatever it is, I'm going to see if that changes with the active phone connection. And nothing. Okay. Let's turn it off. Power cycle it just to see. Oh, look at that. Ha! <laughs> See, I knew, oh, okay, that was weird. It's doing, it's definitely doing different behavior now. So I'm wondering if it's actually working properly now, or because my modem, home modem uses, uh, it has a home phone line over cable. It could be that it's causing something where it's an older modem. Someone made a comment about that down below in my 56K video that, you know, they were shocked or surprised I was still using that over the cable line it was recognizing it and utilizing it without an issue i didn't think about that before i just figured you had dial tone you're good to go where it was you know historically over copper lines but 
you know, in this particular case, I am using uh, that. And it's possible this modem just does not like that. But I'm going to turn it off again, off and on one more time. Okay, so it's doing the same behavior what that plugged in. Yeah, and I can hear it click inside when it does that. And remember, every single time, no matter what I did historically with the bad capacitors, it wouldn't even behave like this. Okay, so I'm going to do now, because it is working slightly differently with a different behavior, I'm a little more confident that it could work, <laughs> uh, or at least we're on the right path in the right direction, because again, it is doing something different when it detects the active phone line. Okay, so I'm going to do is get the bench all cleaned up because it's quite a mess and get a computer set up to see if we can get this tested. Okay, and we're back and we're all set up on the bench. I'm just using the Dell Optiplex GX1, the Pentium 2 system here with Windows 98. I had used this computer in other, or other videos as well on the channel. And so we're just going to go into control panel real quickly here and see if we can get that modem installed. So here we are under modems. We have the 56K modem that I had used in the previous video. Click on add and it says here, you know, detect my modem. I'll select it from a list. I'm going to see what it does on the front display here when it tries to detect it. Because it's looking for COM2. Now it's plugged into COM1 on this computer. So we'll see when it hits COM1. Okay, we are getting some blinking activity on the modem. This is looking for a modem. And it says Windows cannot find any new modems or did not find any new modems attached to your computer. To select your modem from a list, click next. Now, I don't remember if this modem auto detected with Windows or not. I'm just going to hit next. And I believe the driver is built into Windows for this modem. Uh, so we have Hayes, and there it is there, right here. So Hayes V-Series Ultra Smart Modem 9600, we'll hit Next. And we're on COM1, we'll hit Next. Please wait when, while Windows installs your modem. Your modem has been set up successfully. So the lights still look the same as they were. The on hook is still off. Hook, I think it's off hook. It's still off, and I don't know what's going on there because there is a line detected the very least it should pick it up so i mean we have the modem installed now under properties com one i mean the speeds are relevant at the moment uh just because again we don't have any connections to deal with at the moment and this stuff is all pretty straightforward windows defaults and that's how i remember connecting before i mean obviously i had windows 3.1 when i'd use this modem and eventually windows 95 before upgrading to a 288 modem so i'm going to go under diagnostics here so here's our modem uh, the driver, just using the generic driver or the Windows driver, sorry. Click on more info. Communicating with modem, it's flashing again. The modem has failed to respond. Make sure it's properly connected and turned on if it's internal modem or is connected. Verify that the interrupt for the port is properly set. So interrupt four. I mean, it's using the interrupt for the port itself. There's no conflicts in control panel. IRQ4 is what it's using. IRQ4 is what matches up in the modem configuration. So I don't know what it's doing. I don't, I don't think the modem is coming out of its diagnostic mode for some reason. And I don't know why. The capacitors obviously were bad. There was an issue there, but everything else, they weren't bad enough. You know, there wasn't enough leaking in these capacitors. You can definitely see they're slightly bulging but there was not enough cap juice is what I call it that had run on the board on the PCB to make any difference. And there was no real, there wasn't a lot of fizzling with the vinegar. I mean, there's a little bit of goo on the bottom, but nothing, nothing that we, we couldn't fix. So I, I don't know why it's not coming out of this mode. I'm just going to check here under dial up. See, it, it's not communicating with the modem some, for some reason. It says dialing. You can see the send data light is flashing a little bit here. Yeah, I was, I was really hoping that it was going to, you know, pick up the dial tone or do something differently. I, I, I do have a memory that when it was plugged in using the serial cable, that once it detected the communication from the computer, that it would come out of whatever it was in, it would accurately reflect and start to communicate. So I don't know what is 
going on here. So it says the modem is not responding properly. Please verify the modem is plugged in the computer. The same stuff that we we talked about before. All right, so I'm going to close that for now. We're going to shut the modem off. There we go. We have it powered off. Unplug it again. And I'm just going to take it out of its enclosure here just to see. Let's go down on the bench here. There we go. Just to see what we if there's any heat or anything going on here. Let me know down in the comments. You guys are the experts here. This is something that I really want to get going. Yeah, no, I'm feeling there's definitely some warmth. This chip right here, this Zilog chip is very warm. And so is this chip right here. So I'm not sure. Uh, let me see if I get the light on there. So the chip is the chip is a UAT78 S4 zero PC Motorola chip. And I don't know if they're common or not. I'd have to look, but that's definitely getting warm. It's not getting hot. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm not sitting here saying it's super hot. I don't have one of those fancy flare cameras that can tell you what the um, what the uh, temperatures are. But I'm definitely getting warmth when it's powered up to those chips. Like this chip is cold. That's cold. This is warm a little bit up here. Like this chip right here is warm. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to call it for now. I mean, I'm, I'm disappointed I didn't get this working. I thought, I, I truly thought, given that it's doing different behavior, that the capacitors that we replaced that I thought, were, well, I mean, they were bad, that would fix that. Unfortunately, it's not the case. You know, they're cool now to the touch, which is great before they were warm. I'm going to call it again. Like I said, I really, you know, I'm really interested to see if anybody on the channel can let me know if you think you know, what I should try next. I don't have an oscilloscope, so I can't go and see what it's doing on the different pins. I'm going to look to see if I can find the schematic for this particular board, uh, for the PCB, for the modem, and see if I can run some traces and find out exactly what these chips are and what they're doing and see if there's any damage. I mean, it could be the chip that's bad. It could be not working. The other thing I got thinking about in my mind, and I keep on dismissing it, but it is possible, anything's possible, is I, as I had mentioned, this is the original... Uh, modem, but it's not the original power supply. So when I look at the actual requirements, they're nice enough to have this on the bottom here. When I look at the requirements, it states that it rated output 14 volt AC, 1.14 amps. So keep that in mind. That's what it's saying. 14 volt, 1.14 amps. And when I look at the actual haze, and, th and this number, by the way, is the same number that reads online, but it says 14 volt, 1.14 amps. When I look at that, I say that matches completely. It is a haze device or transformer. When I look up the modem online and I look at the 2004 AM, it does match with a 52-00013 transformer, and that's all built in. So again, I don't know for sure what's going on. I just like to consider all options because I'm sure. I misplaced it. I have it somewhere in my collection, somewhere that transformer, the original one somewhere. I wish I could find it, but I've looked and looked and I couldn't. But again, that's why I ordered this other one because I wanted to get this going. And I like to consider all options. But like I said before, the behavior is acting differently. You can see the modem ready flashing. The on hook or off hook will come on here in a second. There it is. And, you know, it came out of that receive data frozen mode. So I, again, if you know, please let me know down in the comments. You know, I know Adrian Black on Dig Adrian's Digital Basement had one of these modems uh, as well, and he did a bunch of troubleshooting on it to find out. I don't know if he, I, I can't remember the exact details of the video, but I think he combined a couple of them. I may just message him as well uh, to see if there's something that he can help me with. But I definitely am very interested in restoring this old tech. This is, again, my very first modem. I'd like to have it uh, up and running again, and at least at the very least in a functional state. So again, if you know, please let me know down in the comments what I should do here. I would really appreciate it. I, we didn't get where I wanted to go today, but that's okay. You know, you can't win them all. And this is something that uh, it was an experience. I mean, we did end up soldering on and replacing new, uh, new capacitors on here. This is one step forward. We changed the behavior. 
there's something else going on. I definitely want to get this fixed up. So it's not a total loss yet. We'll keep on going in a future video. If you like today's video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button. It really makes a difference for the channel to grow. We're definitely approaching 6,000 subscribers. Only more to come after that. So thank you so much for your support on the channel. Hit the notification button, change it to all. You'll be notified of new content such as this. Please leave a comment down below. I'm really interested in this one. Definitely want to get your opinion and options of what I can do on this modem. Always making new content. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.